Good morning, good morning. You are looking live. Haha, uh -huh, right? At an example of bad parenting. Mr. Kitty was out here eating his breakfast, minding his own business, and Dad forgot. Let out the big hound dog. And the big hound dog cleaned out the bowl. It happens. These two have it worked out, though. You can see. He was pretty much done. These two have been together for a very long time. Kitty's been around 19 years. Olivia will be 21 years old. My baby girl, 21 years old <clears throat> in the first, second week of September. Mr. Kitty has been, look, look, look at the little girl. She's like, I can do what the big girl does. There's nothing there, sweetheart. Mr. Kitty's been around for 19 of those years. We got her, him, when she was two years old. I know you, I tell you this, because we walk over here every day, right, to go to work. There's work. How about that for work? I'll take that every day of my life. Look at this, I need paint. I know that's horrible, it's up underneath the eave. Gotta get to work. Look at the yard though. About five. Four and a half hours yesterday, mowing all of the properties, trimming all the properties. I gotta go over it again today. I've gotta go over the uh, pavilion area today for Gospel Fest to get it as short as I wanna get it because I will not be around tomorrow. That is why today is my Friday for turning on the lights. Because Olivia goes back to school tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. She's thriving. She's awesome. She loves it. That's fine, little girl. Here she comes. Come on in and give the people a hard time today. Bark at them, scream and yell at me, do all kinds of things. Oh, I want to show you the church too, because yesterday morning, look at this. Ooh, looking good. Smelling good. Good morning, everybody. I want to wave to everybody because I appreciate you checking in. Go ahead and share the video. Let's get everybody checked in this morning. Let's talk about some stuff. All kinds of stuff on my mind. What an incredible day yesterday. I couldn't sleep last night uh, for a good reason. I mean, yesterday was a very physical day, cleaning the church and then taking care of the outdoor work and then a little bit of indoor work and then we had just a fantastic meeting last evening. You ever have one of those meeting you look up, it's gone nearly three hours, and it seemed like it was 45 minutes. That's what you call a good church leadership meeting. And I was just like, I'm gonna take my shoes off. Okay. Jennifer, I saw pictures of your beautiful daughter this morning. Oh my goodness, you guys look like twins. That was amazing. I was like, oh, Jen's going back to high school. That is pretty cool stuff. So proud, right? I know how you feel. Goes so quickly, doesn't it? Good morning, Kim. I'm trying to wave to you, Kim, and everything went crazy. Oh, look at that sun beaming through. Father God, thank you so much. This Thursday morning, thank you so much for church. Thank you so much, Holy Spirit, for binding us together with your love, your purpose, your wisdom. You are the head of this church. You are the head of every church. Help us to recognize that. Help us to submit to your sovereignty. Help us to enjoy and rest. Didn't we talk about that yesterday? Rest in being your children and living in your will in Jesus' name. The blessing that we ask for simply is faith. We love your grace. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, yes. We talked about that yesterday. And what a, let me get my camera work done here. I had to mow, mow, I had to vacuum. Oh, yes. We should play a song today. You want me to play a song today? At Calvary, I've got at the cross up here, at the cross. Go rest high on that mountain. Go rest high on the mountain. I've got uh, all my faith is in Jesus. And I got a few 
Jimmy Buffett songs here. I sing praises to your name. Got that one. There you go, baby. I know what you wanted. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. There she goes. Whoops. She doesn't have a ball up here today. She took it downstairs, so she's going to be pretty bummed out. Hi, everyone. Let me go grab something quick. Let me ask you this. Do you recognize Jesus Christ as the leader of your church? <clears throat> it's a great question. As good Protestants, we do recognize Jesus Christ as the leader and the creator. Yeah, you missed it. I was not pleased with you, young lady. I was going to sing that, and you were going to be there. Maybe I'll sing it again. It's all right. <clears throat> and here's the reason I ask. You know, we talked last evening in terms of leadership. Let me run this by you guys. As a leader, you get what you create or what you allow. And probably 75%, if not more, of a leadership role is what you allow. It is the passive form of leadership. In other words, setting standards. I know, I'm teasing you, of course. I'm not angry with anybody. Um, setting standards, creating boundaries, conveying expectations, and then it is what you allow from that point on time. So it's what you create. Here's the environment, here's the expectations, here are the boundaries, here are the ways to achieve all of that stuff. And it's what you allow. Then what bubbles up? Well, yes, 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 no, no. You must address that. If you do not, then it's null and void. You've said you wanted this or you have created all of the structures in place for this to try to move toward this vision, this idea, this whatever. But then you've negated everything that you said by allowing it not to happen or allowing resistance to thrive or allowing a subgroup to go a separate way. Why am I talking about this? Because I'm very, very annoyed and it's not because I'm a Penn State fan but there's so much of this going on. I'm very, very annoyed at the whole shakedown at Ohio State. Because they're, they're, as a leader, right, you either, you're, you, you do not support lying, manipulating, and the old boys network of allowing wife beaters and child molesters and so on and so forth to work with you, or you do. And they do. You know what I'm saying? If you don't want those things to happen, then you do not allow them. You do not slap somebody on the wrist and allow them to go their merry way. We can, that, is, that is a relative, and I know that there is not, that is not a victimless situation, and so I'm not in any way, shape, or form saying that. Good morning. But that is a relatively a smaller situation than we look at the Catholic Church. And we talked about, in, in terms of leadership, you get what you create or you allow. You've created the environment in which homosexual pedophiles can do their thing. You've created that environment. You've allowed that environment. And now when you do get busted, so to speak, when it's all coming out, you, all you're doing is more and more and more and more double talk, cover up, wrapping around each other. You either allow it or you do not allow it. There, when, it, it when, when, when you elevate the issues into the realm of pedophilia and homosexual pedophilia, you're getting to the area of, yeah, you either allow that or you don't allow that. There's not a lot of gray area there. So clean house. If you actually believe, if you actually believe what you say, that this is wrong. Let's just be simple here. That this, we believe that this is wrong and we will not stand for it. Then don't. But that's not what's happening. And so that tells me, who do you believe is the head of your church? Jesus Christ? 
Jesus Christ doesn't preach that. Jesus Christ doesn't allow that. And unrepentant souls who participate in those behaviors will burn in hell. So it's not Jesus Christ. So who's the head of your church? It's not Jesus Christ. I get it. It's annoying. It's not, it's difficult, but it's not that hard. And so if there's a situation in a small context or a large context, whatever you as a leader, whenever you are out in front and you say, this is how I would like things to function, this is how I would like it to be, you've chosen me as a leader, I was appointed as a leader, whatever the case may be, you can't have it both ways. You say, this is how we would like it to be, this is what I want, this is what should happen, oh, but it's okay if it doesn't. And you know what I'm talking about? So I'm, an, I'm annoyed with that. And I, yes, I do equate those two situations in that sense. You're able to understand the larger situation by looking at the smaller situation. And it's just a typical example of the old boys network covering for itself. There's obvious cover up beforehand. There's this idea of plausible deniability. And then there's this slap on the wrist. And then there's this arrogant head coach who said who comes across as the victim of this witch hunt which obviously isn't the case so you you and so Ohio State and, and you know as a Penn State fan you know of, I know of what I speak in terms of watching all of that go down and they gutted it and they said no no more it's done root out every individual leader coach everyone who had anything to do with this one they're away from the school two if they're criminal, then have that at criminal justice system. And three, we're going to do penance, self-imposed penance. So I was, you know, unless I'm fooled again by them, it would appear as though they took those leadership steps to <laughs> repent and revamp and recreate. So, okay, so there's my leadership speech for the day. What do you think? Full of crud? full of crud, but dear Catholic Church, you're not going to get any better. You have done nothing but put some ice on the swelling. You've done nothing but take a few antibiotics for the infection. It's still there. And if you say, well, no, well, the people that, no, the leaders that allowed it are still there. You cannot, shame on you, preach from the Holy Scriptures and then in any way, shape, or form not be accountable for people who are raping other people. Say, so, well, that's a whole separate issue. No, it's not. Well, it is for you because Jesus Christ is not the head of your church. The refiner's fire, that's, we, and, and you say, whoa, no, Jesus Christ is all about grace, grace, grace. For the repentant heart, yes, for the repentant heart. It's available. It's often said that Judas Iscariot's biggest mistake was not betraying Jesus Christ. It was never asking for forgiveness. So for the repentant heart, yes. For the truly repentant heart, yes. Even for the pedophile who I hope as convicted is removed from our society, but so salvation is available for that repentant, truly, honestly repentant heart. But the refiner's fire means that you are not allowing you, you're right. You are, you, are, you are holding people accountable. You're giving them the hard choice at this point in time. You have performed evil. Here are your choices. Here is what's happening to you. You may not have any choices. Here is what's happening now because you have performed evil. And the rest, in terms of that repentant heart, is between them and their creator. But the, we have example after example after example. We just read one on Sunday. I've not come to bring peace, but a sword. I will separate families. I will separate churches. I will separate. 
I will set people against each other. And it's true because that is the very nature of truth. And this is where Satan is working on that truth, that it is all relative. It is not relative, and that's why the Bible is divisive. That is why the truth of salvation is divisive, because it is truth. If we claim truth, then we're claiming what? That other stuff is untrue. You have to be comfortable in that skin. You have to be comfortable in that skin. And that's where the Christian church under the pressures from the world were not comfortable in that skin. Well, that's not going to get as many people in the doors as I need. Then your priorities are off. You're serving Lucifer. Have at it. Welcome to the hundred lane highway to hell. You, you can't have both. You, we, over and over and over and over, you can't serve two masters. If you think you are, you're not. You're only serving Satan. Right? We've said it before. <laughs> Come back at me, Andrew. Right? The, the Rush lyric, it, it just sticks in your mind because it's so simple and so true. If you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. You, that's your choice. I choose not to decide. I'm going to straddle the fence. You can't straddle the fence. There's no way that you can get a leg up on the other side. You're firmly in the camp of the God of this world, Satan. So choose this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And all that that entails. And I'm okay with what he says. And that's not a pat on the back. And that's not arrogance. It's actually submissiveness and humility and in that is great power if i could oh and men men we've gone down this road before that is where men where we've cut the head off the church with men we've cut the head off the family with men satan is hard at work in su submission and humility no thank you those are not manly traits yeah well let's look where all those manly traits have gotten us you see what I'm saying? That the power of the Holy Spirit comes in repentance and comes in submitting your will to His. You want to know what it's like to be a man? Then submit to the power of the Holy Spirit and allow Him to grow you and show you as a man. And forget the images of this world and the pressures of this world and what that looks like. Boy, I am on my high horse today. What do you got to say? Dennis has been writing some stuff. <clears throat> That's my point. If, right? Now, especially in this day and age, and especially in the Me Too era, and, and all of these things, like... Like the Me Too thing, that's overall a good thing. And then we see everything, unfortunately, taken to the nth degree, where it becomes trivialized. But the idea that this will not be allowed in society anymore. And, and you, we've seen it, it's real. I mean, again, you, you look at the Matt Lauer situation. Here's a man on television, literally preaching to us of morality and raping women in his office between shows. And so the idea that that's being called out and not allowed is a good thing. And, and so any company, any organization, any anything that says no, this, no. Those days are over, this is not tolerated. Then don't tolerate it. It's not rocket science. My goodness, if we're talking about things like rape and pedophilia, you say that will not be tolerated. Then don't tolerate it. Am I dumb? Is it really that simple? Then don't tolerate it. But, 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 well, no. You believe what you say or you don't believe what you say. You, you've allowed this all these years. You knew what was happening. As a matter of fact, you're gone. And, it, the, and the law have at you if you've got any crit criminal liabilities. Right? Am I, that's, not, that's not even harsh. That's love. What? That's love. You're saying, according to the Holy Scriptures, you are practicing evil. Repent. 
It's the only way that you can save your soul now, whether that's in prison or not in prison. Repent, because the years that you spend in prison will be nothing compared to the eternity that you spend in hell. But we should, we should, we should give grace. You know, grace has become a code word for Christians for allowing all of this crap. Here's what I believe, and here's what we truly believe as a church. But we must extend grace to somebody who doesn't believe. We must extend grace. We must give grace. This behavior is not allowed, but we're all, so we'll give grace. So let's be careful. Grace is a wonderful, wonderful thing, but it is generated and originated by Jesus Christ and has specifically to do with the free gift of salvation for even the pedophile. That's grace, more grace than I could give. So when we're throwing that word around, let's be very conscious of how we're using it and if we're not using it to allow negative stuff, allow what we don't want in our churches, allow the doctrine that we don't want in our churches. Right? If you as a denomination believe certain things and then you have a bunch of people that don't believe those and you say, well, we should extend grace for the sake of unity. You're creating disunity because here is your doctrine and now you have allowed an individual to come in that does not believe your doctrine. Hello, that's disunity. But, 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 but no, I mean, you believe it or you don't but they're a nice person and we should extend grace because they're really great with people and they could really generate a real thriving church. Believing what? Telling people what about Jesus? And are they really a part of your doctrinal tradition? No. So uh, if you get what you create or you get what you allow. And, I, and for me, and I'm, I'm criticized for being that way, but there, you know, <laughs> we talk about the purity, we talk about holiness, holiness, I'm on a diet, I'm on a rant this morning, so you can keep writing, <laughs> but I'm on a rant, because we talk about holiness, but we don't want holiness, we say, yes, I am called out, I have repented, I have turned, I have faced my creator, I've submitted I want forgiveness for my sin. I believe you are the risen Lord. I want to be called out of this world. I want to do the things that you want me to do, Father God. Actually, no, I don't. Because when push comes to shove, I won't do them. Look at me, I'm a Christian. Look at me, I'm saved. Look at me, I'm doing this, doing that, doing the other thing. And the Lord says, all I really want you to do is this. Are you kidding? You would like me to humble myself and do that trivial piece of crap job? We want holiness. We portray holiness. That's holier than thouness. But we don't want holiness. Our churches, holy, holy, holy. We're singing holy, holy, holy while some dog and pony show is going on around us. That's completely unscriptural and completely unbiblical. You're not holy. You look like that Rush concert. That's not holy, that's not different, that's not called out. We're sinking with the culture. But we're too afraid to trust God. I can't trust God with my church, are you my church? Hear my terminology? I can't trust God with my church, are you crazy? He'll ruin it. Here, here's for you, human race. Here's for you, church. Shame on us all. If it's in here, I want it. And if it's not in here, I don't. And I'm okay with the outcome. I'm finding that the trash truck is going by. Now, there's nothing more metaphorical for exactly what I'm talking about. This is exactly what I'm talking about. If this church is holy and made holy by the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit, called out to live differently and be holy, here we are in this sanctuary. And what I just saw was the trash truck going across outside. Is there a better metaphor right now for today's talk? 
Inside, outside. Inside, out. When was grace extended to the... Boom! Yeah. I, I couldn't agree anymore. Of what victims? What victims? All that matters is the image of the organization, whether it is a football program or whether it is the Catholic Church or whether it is IBM or whether it is NBC. Because we've succumbed not to the power of God, not to the power of the Holy Spirit through faith in Jesus Christ. We've succumbed to the power of our own wills and the drive of the dollar. And that's not, you, you know where I'm coming with that. Because I am very uh, individual liberty oriented. I believe capitalism is actually the highest moral economic ideal. When we can harness self-interest, it drives creativity, it, you know, profit drives those things. We could go on and on about that. But when that becomes your God, you're done. All bets are off mor morally. All bets are off ethically on a day-to-day -day basis. When that becomes your God, when your business becomes your God, when your image becomes your God, when money becomes your God, same is true inside the church and outside the church. Hey, church, when your image becomes your God, you're done. When money becomes your God, you're done. When your status becomes your God, you're done. You're done. You're serving Satan. I told you that I was going to go back. Now I, oh. Yeah, I love this. It, it's applied when a person repents. And that is also true. You are not wrong. And that is the internal struggle, struggle of man and church, right? The secular and the sacred. The sacred and the profane. The pure and the vulgar. And that will be the struggle in your church body if you have a known fill-in-the-blank. You know, as human beings, are we building that, that bridge enough? Yes, being... Uh, being um, uh, um, prudent and, and being wise in our decisions and allow and, and making the individual accountable and all of those things. Yes, but are we also opening the door for a truly repentant heart? That's it, in, you know. And when that church, that church could make their holiness their God, not allowing for anyone who may not fit that mold. You're done. It's exactly, that's perfectly true, Barbara. Perfectly true. And that is part of the man, God, church, right? It's like, but when Jesus Christ is the head of your church, it becomes more clear because it's not up to me, it's not up to you, it's not up to the board of elders. It's up to Jesus Christ. And what we must do is just submit and pray and talk and discern and lead by the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, that's a piece of cake. No, it is not a piece of cake. But it is what we are to do, unless Brian, unless this is going to be the Brian Warner Church of the Church, Brian Warner Church of God, or whatever you want to call it. And it's not. Literally, God can only help us if it does. Because if man is leading church, we're all going to hell. Because that is my destiny of the, my broken nature. <sighs> you speak the truth. You speak the truth. And, and then, I mean, all of these, uh, you know, it's true. That's what's going to come out. That's what's going to come back when we're speaking the truth that there is right and wrong, that there is heaven and hell, that God created the heavens and the earth and he created human beings in his likeness and image and his desire is to redeem every soul. 
And this is how it is possible to be redeemed, for your past to be redeemed, for your sin to be redeemed and turn into testimony and turn into something that can actually help the world and help people. Here's how that is possible through faith in Jesus Christ as the risen Lord and true submission, repentance. I am sorry, turning around, facing him and saying, I am sorry, I repent. I believe and receiving the Holy Spirit who will just, as you submit in prayerfully day by day by day by day with him, you will grow in your understanding. You will grow in faith. You will grow in what he wants of you. Again, perhaps your sins of the past have been so heinous that this is all taking place in prison. So be it. This is not a free ticket out of anything that you have done here in terms of our earthly structures and laws. But the time that you spend, ask our brother Paul, the time that you spend in prison Nothing to the time that you will spend in hell. Truth is divisive. So we compromise. I don't want to be divisive. We compromise on church doctrine. We compromise on orthodox Christian teaching. We compromise on everything. It's the nature. And sometimes that compromise is covered by the word grace. our earthly, humanistic use of the word grace. Sometimes that compromise is covered by the word, well, we must extend grace. I know they don't believe as we do, but we're going to allow them to lead in our churches. You either believe it or you don't. Yeah. Love you guys. How about that? That set me off this morning. Uh, you know, and again, I was just listening to the radio, and here's the outcome of Ohio State. And that's just symptomatic, of course, of large, large, the big issues that we're talking about here today. Structures large and small, that's just symptomatic. And the arrogance of that leader who was standing up there reading a, reading a prepared script, never admitting to anything saying how he, you know, is a victim in all of this. No, the woman who's had the snot beaten out of her a hundred times is the victim, you arrogant ass. Sorry. And you, uh, you, uh, you helped promote that. going back to the book of the 12. You know when I whip out the prophets, baby, we're speaking into the church. Here's your quiz. <clears throat> because, you know, here's your quiz, what this is. And I just, I love this scripture. <clears throat> New Living Translation. It is chapter four of one of the minor prophets, as we say. Listen to me, you fat cows living in Samaria. You women who oppress the poor and crush the needy and who are always calling to your husbands, bring us another drink. The sovereign Lord has sworn this by his holiness. The time will come when you will be led away with hooks in your noses. Every last one of you will be dragged away like a fish on a hook. You will be led out through the ruins of the wall. You will be thrown from your fortresses. Go ahead and offer sacrifices to the idols at Bethel. Keep on disobeying Gilgal. Offer sacrifices each morning and bring your tithes every three days. Present your bread made with yeast as an offering of thanksgiving. Then give your extra voluntary offerings so you can brag about it everywhere. This is the kind of thing you Israelites love to do, says the Sovereign Lord. Ouch. A am I talking to... The ancient Israelites? Or am I talking to wealthy, fat Americans? <laughs> you know, metaphorically. I 
I brought hunger to every city and famine to every town, but still you would not return to me, says the Lord. I kept the rain from falling when your crops needed it the most. I sent rain on one town, but withheld it from another. Rain fell on the field while another field withered away. People staggered from town to town looking for water and food, but there was never enough. But you still would not return to me, says the Lord. Amos. Amos 4, man. Amos 4. He lays it on the line. You fat cows of Israel, living fat and happy, thinking that you have it all. Therefore, I will bring upon you all the disasters I have announced. Prepare to meet your God in judgment, you people of Israel. For the Lord is the one who shaped the mountains, stirs up the winds, and reveals his thoughts to mankind. He turns the light of dawn into darkness and treads the heights of the earth. The Lord God of heaven's armies is his name. All, right. All my hope is in Jesus. Thank God my yesterday's gone. All my sins are forgiven. Yes, they are. Well, I, I've been washed by the blood. Brothers and sisters, we got a choice to make in this world today. You've got a choice to make. Right or wrong. Truth or lies? It is so hard, but it is not difficult. And I promise you that if you choose truth, you will not regret it. You will not regret a moment of it. That is my message. That will be the message until the last breath that I take. Because God loves you so much that he will not, he does not want you and he will not allow you. If he can help it by people like you and me who will tell the truth to other people. To live in that lie. And to die unredeemed. Get that message out. There's a sense of urgency about it today. All my hope is in Jesus. As a redeemed soul, thank God my yesterday is gone. I don't live there anymore. My sin is forgiven. I have been washed by the blood. I pray that for you as well. This day. Exactly. And that, you know, that's the thing. So we laid it on the line this morning. If you think people need to, oh, don't we go there all the time, Dennis? That, that's probably one of the cornerstone comments in the Bible that makes me look in the mirror every day of my life. If you don't take that seriously, if you don't explore what that means, it is to your own detriment. Those are those guidepost statements. Those, those, as, as my brother Mark would say, you dust the, you get the shine on that gem and you see what Jesus is saying. He's saying, yeah. Listen, it is that important. Right? No, we won't be with you tomorrow morning. I'll check in with you Sunday morning before church. I hope I see lots of you um, Saturday evening, beginning at 5. We've already got a, the influx of food here. The fresh homemade soups are being made today and um, all of those different things. It's just going to be delicious and wonderful. And then the music that starts at 6 goes on with a couple or three different uh, groups that are going to be here singing outside. Bring a chair. We've got seats for some if you've been here for the Gospel Fest before or if you've been here for the uh, celebration services. You know, we've got so many picnic tables. Good morning, Andrea. 
Um, but bring it, you know, bring your own seat if you wish and just enjoy, relax, kick back. If you've never seen the church, come in and explore. You can't get lost in here. But I do appreciate. Uh, again, if, if this is a message that you need to get out, we made like four friends this week alone. It's different people. So keep on sharing the videos and, 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 and then your friends want to check in with us and so they become friends and we become a network and we become a group and we become a church by the power of the Holy Spirit only. Come here, you wanna pray with us? Come on. Susie's been so good this morning. I know. Yes. <laughs> so Father God, thank you. We're thanking you this morning for truth. We're thanking you for helping us by the power of your Holy Spirit to understand good and evil and to, by the power of the Holy Spirit, grant us the courage to stand up for good, period, and not allow evil. Lord, increase our faith, increase our discernment so that we may understand these things increase our boldness and our security in you so that we may stand up for these things. That is how the world will actually become a better place. Not by our power, but by yours. Let your church thrive this weekend, Father God. May every church that cries Jesus' name be a blessing to you and not an embarrassment. We pray that they may just submit themselves to your will and worship according to your purposes. May your church bless you this weekend, Father God, and then go and be a blessing into a dying, dying world. We love you and we appreciate you. We need you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey kids, we'll check in with you again. Quick check Sunday morning. Uh, wish me luck, taking my daughter back to college, taking 36 hours to do that. And uh, we appreciate you, appreciate you very much. So uh, that's it, go to church, man. It's really important, peace.